morning, brothers and sisters. Today is such a beautiful day. Um, <clears throat> I just want to read Luke 24, 39 through 44 here. Jesus said, see my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? <laughs> they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate before them. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. <laughs> Praise Jesus. Thomas put his hand in his, put his finger in his uh, holes in his side. And um, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones. And I, I was talking to the Lord about this and he, he's kind of revealed it. And I wanted to share it with you guys because he is a spirit of truth. And oh gosh, it's such good news. Well, when Jesus came back and appeared to all, to Cephas, then to the 12, and then to the 500 plus people, he walked through a wall at one point, and then another point, Thomas puts his hand in his, in his a hole in his side. He, he said that he needed to see, to believe, he needed to, to put his finger in his, in the hole in his side. And actually, there's a picture right here of that. Let's see, right there. So Jesus was flesh and bone. He was no more blood because he spilt the blood for the remission of the sins. His book, the book of life, was spilt <laughs> for us. And blood and water flowed out from his side. So I was thinking about this. See my hands, my feet, you know, flesh and bones as you see that I have. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. So I started thinking about this. I'm like, Jesus... You know, a lot of people talk about this, and we need we need revelation, basically. And the revelation or the understanding, the opening of the eyes of our understanding is awesome. So we've heard about angels who appear as people, man or woman, I guess man, uh, angels who came messengers, and they ate with um, people, and they walked with people, and uh, they moved people. Uh, the angels can can be uh, disappear and appear. They can go through walls because uh, they're like a ghost. That's why we call it uh, the Holy Ghost because they're like a ghost. Now, the Holy Ghost is not dead. Ghosts are dead. The Holy Ghost is like the Holy Spirit. But Jesus was the Son of Man and the Son of God, but he was God in the flesh, Emmanuel. And the resurrected Christ is flesh and bone but he could he's also the lord in heaven he can go through and he has the glory right at the right hand of god he received his glory back so whenever people say oh i've seen jesus you know he can come and have a meal with you because like the angels they can be in their glorified state or they can come as a poor begging man on the street so it really cleared that up for me that he is a flesh and bones um, son of man, but he's also uh, the glory of God in heaven. So I just wanted to clear that up for people who had questions about that because um, the son of man means that he is the second Adam. And we and the second Adam is, he put on oikotirion as brother ultimate Mordecai always says. It's so awesome. Um, but after his resurrection, he came in a flesh body. And he's appeared to many people. He's appeared in their houses and different things because he will appear to his people. Now, I haven't seen him. He hasn't come in my house yet, yeah, although he's here. Hi, Jesus. Um, he's here, but I haven't seen him. And he says in um, 
to doubting Thomas, he says, blessed are they who haven't seen yet believe, you know. So I'm, I'm, it's good that, that, uh, that I'm not believing. I mean, I'm believing and I have not seen because like uh, Downey Thomas, he said, he called him my Lord and my God after he believed. He says, do not disbelieve, but believe. And Thomas answered, my Lord and my God. Jesus said unto him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. So I think that it's exciting that those of us who have not seen him and uh, he hasn't like appeared to us, uh, we know that we are blessed because we believe and we don't have to have um, any kind of miracles or anything or, or put our hands in there because we believe the word of God. And that is what we need to believe saints is that he is real and he has come and he died he prepared from the beginning of the foundations of the world a sacrifice from genesis because he is the temple the the house the tent is the sun he is the temple from the beginning before we had sinned i just got into a really interesting conversation with a um, I think my brother in Christ says, oh, he's definitely Jewish. <laughs> and I can see how the word of God has come in and he's speaking to these people in such a way that is amazing. And I'm going to bring this uh, copy to him tomorrow. But he's talking to the Jewish right now. And it's quite amazing because you know, he's talking about, are you, he said, are you kosher? And I'm like, yeah, because I have the Holy Spirit. And he just, he's like, oh no, you're not keeping all the law, statutes and commandments and blah, blah, blah. And I go, well, there's really no temple. So you can't keep the law, statutes and commandments and you don't have a king. You know, Jesus is in the lineage of the, of the son of David, the king in the king's lineage. And so he was, uh, he, he we spent probably an hour talking and uh, the word of God the holy by the Holy Spirit really revealed himself to this man and uh, but he still is um, having a hard time seeing and uh, I'm like well whenever God does this uh, don't get the mark of the beast <laughs> you know because God had a remnant before the plagues are poured out on the earth and uh, those who are the remnant, they are believers. They may be Jewish, but they're believers. But there is a group of people who are not believing, and they still aren't believing, and they will have to give up their life at the end. And um, he knows now that not to take the mark of the beast, to buy or sell. And we know there's been a mark of the beast in the land already. Masons, Jesuits, Shriners, fraternities, and sororities, they have in their hands. Even those who do the yoga practice, they have 666 in their hands. But the Bible talks about, in the book of Revelation, a mark that will cause sores. And, and I know that it's in the spirit realm, we can't see their sores. Uh, they are definitely marked. They have sold their souls to the devil. Um, and the word of God is against them. And he will judge that mystery Babylon. Um, but we don't know those who um, who will not take the actual physical mark um, of the beast. We don't know who they are during the plagues, during the great tribulation. So um, he may be one of them. I don't know because he really he's a professor at the college here at the university. It's a big university. Um, uh, he may not uh, believe right now, but like my brother in Christ said, you know, the Holy Spirit just spoke to him and uh, he's very bright, very smart man. But in every single way, talking about the Torah, the Holy Spirit through me put him to shame. The Holy Spirit, Christ in me. And it's not that God wanted to make him feel stupid. No. He just wanted to show his power and make him jealous. Remember it says in the Bible that he makes them jealous. And I was in awe just listening to the Holy Spirit speak through me. It was like, wow, Christ, you are good. Because it's Christ in me, the hope of glory. He's doing the work, not me. I can't take any credit. All praise, honor, and glory go to him. Go to the Lord of hosts, the Lord God, Christ, who was crucified for the remission of our sins. And because of him, 
We have life, thank you, Jesus, not because of anything we did, but because he first loved us and gave himself for us, a propitiation for our sins. And because of him, we have new life. And we shouldn't boast against the, the branches because, you know, uh, as it says in Rome, Romans 11, he will come for his people. He will restore his people. But they did hand him over and said, let his blood be upon us. Um, I can't remember which verse that is, but it's in the Matthew, I think. The uh, when they were going to crucify him, you know, Judas Iscariot handed him over. He spied him out and handed him over to the priest, which makes him the worst sin. Um, but then the priests turned him over to the Romans to be crucified. And whenever the Pontius Pilate says, uh, "This is a just man. I don't want his blood on my hands," they said, "Let his blood be on us and on our children." So, unfortunately, that is something that is not good for them. But God, in his mercy and his grace, he's holding back the judgments um, and so that they can at least uh, come in. So, uh, many of them will go through the plagues, but they will not be cast in the lake of fire, which is the second death, death if they do not take the mark of the beast and are saved. So, um, remember, he is risen. He's no longer on that cross. <laughs> He's risen. I like this because it proved that God had a plan before he created man, and that was one of the man's arguments. He thought, what a horrible God that would tempt man. And I'm like, he never tempted anybody with a tree. That tree was in his garden. The serpent tempted at Eve, not God. And so God knew in all-knowing, he's all-knowing, he knew that that would happen, so he provided a temple, a tabernacle, his son. He provided a way himself to uh, cover them so they would not be destroyed instantly because he has to judge iniquity and sin. A righteous father will judge and bring about good justice. Um, the man didn't understand it. He called it hate speech. He says, what kind of God does that? And, and he doesn't understand. But he expects me to be kosher and keep Torah. <laughs> and I'm like, I can't keep Torah. There's no temple in uh, Jerusalem. I'm the temple. You know, Jesus, actually, Jesus is the temple. Obviously, the son is the temple. We are in him. I said, I'm in Jesus. He's the temple. He kept the law, statutes, and commandments. He is the righteousness of God. His righteousness is on my breastplate. Because if I put my righteousness on my breastplate, what does it say in Leviticus? And he knew. I said, it says that, our righteousness is as filthy rags. I think it's Leviticus. I can't remember, but he knew that. And he knew the Torah pretty well. And he knew kosher. But he was, I said, you don't have a king. I go, you need a king to do all of those things. I go, I have a king. And the spirit helps me and tell, teaches me what's right and what's wrong. And and he didn't understand that. because I And then I told him, I said, well, the law is the power of sin. I go, if you don't keep it, you're in trouble. And I go, even if you keep it, like the Pharisees and Sadducees, Jesus said, you're close, but you're not quite there. In other words, law keeping doesn't get you to heaven. Grace gets you to heaven. Because you have to understand the holiness of God, the righteousness of God, in order, in order to receive his grace, because you have to know that he is our savior, our redeemer. We don't save or redeem ourselves, even though there's a point where it says re save yourself. That, you have to understand it in context. And so I just wanted to share this awesomeness that the Son of Man, Son of God, did have flesh and bone. And he, and like the angels, we will be like the angels. We will be like him. Um, where we can have flesh and bone and have, um, you know, perfect, oh, is that it? Yeah, there's the flesh and bones. <clears throat> so we can eat the wedding supper of the Lamb with the Lord Jesus. It's going to be awesome. But we can also go through doors, and I don't know how that, all that works, but I do know that angels can appear as light and totally scare people <laughs> in their glory but because pr prophets were always afraid whenever an angel came 
they can appear as a homeless man, a beggar on the street, because he says um, you might have entertained an angel unawares. So we need to understand that these are things that we can't comprehend in our physical carnal man, but in God's kingdom, all things are possible. God bless you guys.